Morning. This is Pop at My Shower Farm. It's February, what is it? 14th? 17th. 17th. It was zero out this morning. We're in the workshop this, this morning uh, building our big new quail cages. Uh, we've had a lot of questions on them. You've seen them on our tours. But today we're going to show you how we build them. Now I say it like that with a we build them. And I'm not going to show you how you might build them. I'm going to show you how we build them. Uh, I'm the kind of guy that wants to teach you to fish. I'm happy to teach anybody to fish that wants to learn how to fish, but I'm probably not going to give you the fish that I just caught. I'm going to show you how to catch your own fish. So I'm going to show you how we do it. I'm hoping you get some uh, some practical things out of this. Um, uh, you know, you, you're not going to have the tools we do, maybe. Maybe you got better tools. So... Uh, you'll have to work a lot of stuff out. Uh, before we get started, I want to give you a little nugget here. I want to take you into the greenhouse. Today was zero out. Feeding the cows. My didn't have my gloves on. My hands were freezing. I looked on my phone. It is zero out. What I wanted to show you, it's 63 in here. There's no heat source in this solar greenhouse at all. And there's still snow from... Two days ago that it snowed on the roof it gets 60 degrees in here yesterday it gets 60 degrees in here again today and the snow hasn't melted off this carbon fiber no polycarbonate there you go polycarbonate double wall i think it's only three eighths of an inch thick uh stuff i bought it from farm tech that came 16 foot long um we still got some herbs in here. We got some peppers going in here that we wintered over. Uh, some onions and celery and yaka yaka. Um, these are some ferns that a friend gave me mine this fall. I could not find garlic this fall. So it kind of made me mad. And, and um, a couple weeks ago, I said I'm going to try to grow some from store-bought organic California garlic. I'll show it to you over here. And uh, by golly, it's, it's, it's going really, really well. Got, there's some crazy people on the internet, YouTube, wanting to show you how to do that. I don't get what they're trying to do at all. Because they can make a lot of green stuff, but I don't think they'll ever get garlic. So these are heating pads. Uh, this is the foam sheeting stuff with aluminum on it. I've showed you this before that I made these propagator out of. It's just a heating pad. There's the controllers out here. Um, and uh, for this polycarbonate, this was scrap from that. And uh, yeah, so I, I stick them in here, water them every day. Here's some onions uh, going, starting here. Uh, these would be big onions, Walla Walla onions, I think maybe what they're called. And I'm gonna put this back on here because it's gonna get hot in there today. Today. And that's kind of the nugget I wanted to show you about how, how well this polycarbonate was working. I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm, I'm hopeful. This is what I bought. Uh, it's a California thing. These are nice big garlics, and I'm hoping that I can catch up without, uh, from not planting them this fall, last fall. So I got a lot of gardening stuff to, to, that I'm hoping to show you this spring. And um, got a hugel culture thing going in a big way. I'm going to be starting a, uh, a raft here real soon. And that's what we're doing. Uh, we got to move a few things here before we get started. This is a gate that I'm building, uh, a second gate on the property. This is more to keep the cows in uh, and than it is to keep the vet people out. But uh, <laughs> working on this today we got to get this moved and it is pretty heavy uh, we'll get that moved then we'll get cutting on some wood so we'll be right back at you and we'll start this what we call them these they go cages zach they go quail cages quail cages they go quail. <laughs> version uh holy 7.0 7. <laughs> seems like version 20.0 yeah it's uh they've been a long time in the making uh, but we're but we're there, and we're going to show you how we build them. So we'll be right back at you. Bye. All right. So we've um, got our stuff moved around here that I needed to get out of here. I needed some help to do it. That fence was really heavy. 
So now we're going to start cutting some parts. And uh, the first thing I want to, so I'm going to be basically showing you guys some, some techniques that I have come up with over the uh, <laughs> years I've been doing this stuff. So the first thing I did, and I'll show you how I cut these up, is the first thing I wanted to do is I wanted to make some of these up. And these are the boards that are used for, you see they're kind of cut on a slope, and I'm holding it at a slope. This is where the, uh, the birds set, stand and, put, and uh, do the right thing and they fall out. So that's, that's what this piece is. And I had to do this first because I needed to find the width of it. I needed the thickness of it, not the width, but the thickness of it. So once I established the thickness of those pieces, then I could set my radial arm saw wobble blade. This is a wobble blade. To it. Is that, can you come down here and see this wobble blade? This is an adjustable blade. See how it's kind of wide here and then it's skinny here? Makes a lot of noise, but you can adjust it from quarter inch all the way to three quarter inch. Um, and so I, I set that to the thickness of my pieces so they would fit in there because I wanted them in a, in a little dado because they're so small. And I wanted them small because the bigger they are, the more they're going to collect poop. So the smaller they are, the less they'll collect poop. So with that, then I am going to take this little stick that is exactly the same thickness of my, um, we're going to call them floor joists, because that's basically what it would be if you were building a house, it'd be a, a floor joist. A floor. And I'm going to screw this down, oh, I'm going to screw down once and for um, in line with um, this radial arm blade. And then I'm going to lay this board out. I've already done that, but I'm going to lay the board out. And you'll notice that there's an inch and a half gap here. And I'm going to lay it out there eight inches on center uh, for our purposes and one inch on the end. And then I laid it out very carefully and put a square on it and then cut this out on my radial arm saw. I adjusted this down. This was not here, of course, and then I got up. So you'll see what I'm talking about here in just a second. So if we screw this here, this is my template, if you will, because it's, it's important that we get these accurate. Now, if you were only gonna build one cage, you might not wanna to go to all this trouble. You might wanna just lay it out and cut it on the other. Uh, cut it on whatever saw you're going to cut it on. You could cut this out with a router. Which is, you know, another decent way of doing it. Uh, you could do it on a table saw. It'd be awkward. Um, radial arm saws are kind of old school, but uh, I'm kind of old school. So, uh, so anyhow, so now you see we got this template flipped over. And we're going to bump this up against this stop, and we're going to make a cut. So I don't know how noisy this will be, but I'm going to turn the dust collector on. This is my new setup. I set this up last year, uh, January and February. I did dedicated to cleaning up the shop, moving the shop. This is uh, everything's triple stacked. So this is the sand that pops out. Because normally when you cut something, you need to sand the edges a little bit. Uh, then you got the problem of, you know, you got your scrap wood that you're cutting, so that's that. So basically everything's triple stacked. We've got our drill press, uh, a sander here, uh, just some jigs here. A couple of arm saws set up. Uh, these are, you know, when I'm building stuff, I got all, you know, I got a, lot of I got a whole lifetime of stuff. This is a shaper I got stuck underneath here. Uh, this is a, a Foley belt saw, which is a molder. Uh, this is our standalone solar. We got uh, solar on this barn, but it's standalone. It's a battery battery setup. And this, of course, being the dust click. So hollow chisel mortar, sir. Uh, yeah. So we're going to turn this sucker on and cut the board.
now we got this cut, we're going to take a, our, our template off, if you will. That's that. And now we're going to get the part that we're looking for here. This is the part we're looking for, but it's still not right. It's still too big. So we're going to cut it. Take a little bow, and we'll put the bow. Cut the bow. Other than the template, because that, that's pretty clever on how you can make a template to make sure these are always the exact the same. It would be not unusual for somebody to cut these to width because that's what they wanted to do, cut them to length, cut them to width, and then date all these individually. And my point of showing you how I did it was that I'm, I just did three in the time it would have taken to do one if you had did it individually. And um, that was kind of a trick I kind of came up with when I was doing the beehives. Uh, there are a lot of parts to beehives, and so it's, it's worth giving uh, a thought on how to optimize your time like that. So here we go, here we got our things, which is now is way too tight, but that's not a problem. I'm sending through the they swelled up over the night, and I did these yesterday. We will send them back through the planer. Oh, it feels a little wide. Yep. We'll just send those back through the planer, and uh, we can fix that. So that's not a big issue, but it's an issue. Now we're going to show you how to make these guys. So, kind of a similar thing. We're making. We're going to make them backwards. I have. Um, I have my little mark on my table here. Nice if you have your things set up where you can put your stop, set your stops up like this. And actually, I cut too many of these. And uh, I'm going to turn this guy off. That guy's on. And we'll turn this guy on. Oh. Um, I will share this guy with you. Um, again, we're, build, we're showing you how to build our stuff, and it is seven and a half degrees, but yours may not be seven and a half degrees, and that's that's a function of you know where you're putting the back and where you want the front. So this guy is already cut. I'll push it up against the stop. Of course, I forgot to turn this dust collector on. And then we're going to come over here. Now, this is a pressure treated material as opposed to not, because um, this is where you're going to have all your poop and whatnot. I don't think that's going to be a problem, George. I'm trying to cut that. Just take that out. Um, and I'm going to rip these into the lid. <laughs> into these inch and three quarter uh, and then cut them to length but you know save a lot of time if you don't do it that way because even <laughs> though they're all it's angled they're all the same length because of, you know the way they stack up 
So that's how that goes. Now we got to rip them. We're gonna have to rip these in two. that my buddy made for me and I got several this one's kind of been chewed up quite a bit so from there uh, it'd have been more better if I had this down and edit this out but this guy normally is in this position here so it's off the back uh, this up this is already set, but now we know that it's not, it's going to be too thick possibly, maybe not. And then we're going to plane these down. too big, which is fine. So we're going to plane those down to where they fit, and then we'll, uh, George is cutting the wire for those, and we will assemble that. So we can go over here, and I want to show you one more thing about the material. This here is uh, plywood that has a, uh, a coating on it, kind of a membrane on it, if you will. Uh, I think it's more of a membrane than it is a coating. This is a zip system. We use this for the poop, um, for the poop trays. And it is a very water resistant material. And so I didn't want to use uh, anything that would be uh, rotten out. Turns out we did have a failure on this on my daughter's house, which uh, happened after we decided to use this, but it seems to be working out great. And I ripped these up, and so this, that, I just wanted to point out the type of wood that we use. So the only pressure treated wood that we're using in this is the, the joist of the base floor an egg tray so the food actually comes in contact with it. The rest we use this regular stuff. Um, and as we go, you'll see how we're fitting all these pieces together and how we attach them and whatnot. So, yeah. So I think that's it for the wood cutout. Um, and you'll see more how that happens when we start to assemble it. Right now we got a whole lot of wire to cut up and uh, we will demonstrate that as we get uh, a little closer to being done. Okay, see you soon. Bye. All right, so we have our, we have our plates with our notches in it. We have our studs, so to speak, if we were doing a floor, we're gonna call those floor joists, I guess. And we got those. So we're pulling those and sticking them in the notch. And George here is stapling them in. I think we're using an inch and a quarter stapler. Yeah, about. <clears throat> the things are still pretty tight, but that's better than too loose. And um, I don't know. 
you know, I suppose a guy wouldn't have to notch those in. I feel a lot better about it. It's a lot stronger joint. Uh, certainly gets your spacing correct, and that's important. <clears throat> That's that inch and a half in between. No, I turned it on. That's the inch and a half space, and you'll see that we're actually fitting a two by four in between there um, <clears throat> later on as a structural member. Um, we will show you finished cage, of course, and how important it is that everything lines up. Um, vertically, I'll call it. Then, these guys here will go on the end, and those are full pieces. Uh, and again, that's a structural thing where we'll actually be using that to screw into the main frame. And I just wanted to show you how they stand this thing up and then um, go back to the top plate. This gives you an idea of real time to how long it takes to do this sort of thing. So, I will be clamping that on. I was doing um, something different, and these guys got started putting this together. So, that's why I'm taking a picture and they're working. We may be editing some of this out, but maybe not. Not quite down the back thing. Not quite down in the back on my side. On any uh, Those are good. Okay. All right, that's that. Right. So now we're going to put the lip on the screen, this lip here. This catches the eggs as this thing's at a slope. And um, so these are cut slightly long, uh, half by half. Slightly long, long. That's called a sheet metal break, is what that's called. I don't know why they um, break it. And then we're gonna, it's really important that we put this on, that this is square. Because you can just go about the business of nailing this onto here, and if we're out of square, the screws are in here. Um, if it's out of square, um, you'd find out soon enough that that was out of square. So we take a nice square board, screw it to the bottom, get that front edge nice and lined up, and we have to, counting on the screen, to hold it square, which it will. And 
building this stuff in component parts, it's very important to have everything the right size and square. But you do want to bear in mind that you are building a coil cage and not a piano. So you got that going for you. Good? Yeah. You got a half inch over here. Right. So I'm using a um, half inch staples here, galvanized staples. Keeping it nice and straight again. That's not the most critical part that we're making this thing nice and lined up. As you see how we doubled this front edge. So we folded it and then folded it again. So it's double thick here. And uh, in the past, we had not cut these or we folded them. So they kind of double here. Big mistake because you end up with crisscrosses and you don't end up with a half and half to allow the poop to go through. So this is a lot cleaner look and a much better thing. So I'm gonna go up this side here, down and then up that side and then nail about every four inches here. We don't need that view all that happens. So um, I do kind of try to get that going kind of square when I look at that and everything looks pretty good from just this off. Alright, and I'll come back to you when I got this nailed off and I'll show you how I cut it off and what I cut it off with. Okay. All right, it's a good thing George reminded us that we were going to take this. So this is uh, the disc that I use to cut our wire everything. Um, and, and everything. Uh, you can get these at any of your big box stores, uh, Menards, I think. It's a diamond blade thing. Uh, it w this one here happens to be one from Mad Dog. Mad Dog, Mad Dog. Bad dog. Bad dog. And it's a, it's a hundred dollar blade there. Uh, bought it at a trade show. Um, huh, five, six years ago. Got a lifetime guarantee on it. And if anybody's used it a lot, it has been me. So the uh, reason I like to do it is it cuts it fast and it grinds it down nice and smooth. But you can use a cutoff wheel all the same, but um, in five years, you'll wish you'd bought a hundred dollar thing. So, Could, and then wrestle with it and wish you hadn't did that. <laughs> so better off to leave it long, square this up, cut it off while it's on. Lots faster, a lot more accurate, and it's a beautiful thing. So I'm going to unscrew this from the bottom, and that would be one of six of these, what do we call them, floors, where your bird Poops. Awesome. Uh, Poop. Floor. All right, that's that. All righty, so we got the bottoms made, and now we're going to put together the ends. And the ends uh, get screwed in to a two before with its groove, and we'll go over that. But we got to do this joint here, and that's kind of a, a tricky joint. 
unless you're using uh, a Craig jig. This is a Craig jig spelled with a K, Craig jig. And so we're gonna put these holes in this thing and this is one of the parts that we need also. And so in our purposes, we wanna put two screws on one side and one screw on the other. That's that. And so now we can screw this in like so. Now these grooves, uh, you know, there's lots of different ways to deal with your screens and you can staple it on if you, if you want to. But in our case, and the way this is constructed, it just turns out better if we groove it. So we've got some boards here that are left to be grooved. This is the bottom of an end, needs to be grooved. I've got uh, the saw blade here, it's a, it's a big blade. Uh, the blades that you can get now, this is called a rip blade. I bought it on Amazon, I think it was 80 bucks or something. But it, uh, the, the rip blades you'll buy at Lowe's or something, I don't know if they even have one of these that's thick. Uh, so, but in the case of this, it makes it nice because what you have to do is you have to fit, you know, both of these wires into that groove. And if you have a, a really narrow saw blade, it doesn't really work so well. is half of the two by four. And so once again, I grooved this before I cut it in two. And mostly it's just a safety thing. So as I cut this in two, it'll make two pieces, but it keeps my fingers a little further away from the uh, blade. So these guys need grooved and the ends need grooved on one side. So we can groove one side of these guys, a couple of shoes. If I speeded that up, you know, five times faster than a normal would be, so not for you. Just kidding. Alrighty, so let's put <laughs> let's put some together. And these guys are trained professionals at that, so I'll take the camera and these guys can put some together. So what we did here is we just marked the center of this board and then the center of this board. You got a little mark there, we got a little mark there. And Zach's going to center that up. And then George over here, he's got that already did. And he can put the top piece on. And of course, the top piece is only an inch and three quarter. So we can screw that down. Just screw it right down. Now, we didn't really show you our, our cutting all these pieces. Um, but in the case of, um, in most cases, when you're putting it in this groove, you can not have a you know uh all the way around piece so and some of these get cut out anyway for the feeder and they just drop out so you save a lot of material if you're um not don't have to go all the way around and even on the doors you'll see that we don't have um this piece that goes all the way around we cut it off and that saves a lot of material so we we just fit these in as a uh, a full a full piece that's gotten you know that got cut off and then as these pieces go on these ones that I just drilled and did they're gonna be a little long so we trim that off we just cut it off to fit these here Jack. 
Uh oh, somebody stopped. Why did it stop? One moment. Oh fuck, I have no idea where it stopped. I guess that's okay. Not going back. Oh, there it goes. It's going. Yeah. So, now Zach's going to do the same thing on the ends and use these Craig screws that do that. Now, all the, all the force on this is coming down, and so it's not a, a, a big deal. Um, but those, those Craig screws do a really super job. And you see how George has it clamped together. Here's one clamp to hold it nice and flush and one clamp to hold it down, which is what I would call proper procedure. And that'll give us our ends to the cage. The next piece we'll put together will be the middle and or the backbone is what I refer to it as. So we'll uh, make ready. Backbones here together in just a second. Alrighty, so now it's time for us to make the middle, the back of the cages. These are cages are back to back. And um, of course, it saves you from building a back for every cage by having a back to back like this. And uh, it's a pretty simple process. We use the same Craig jig for the holes going down into the tube of six. We got the, as we showed you, how we drew those. And uh, we're, we just marked the center of that tube of six and then the center of the little six inch piece of tube of six. Zach is marking those and George is screwing them together. And then we're just fitting that screen into the groove. So this is equal opportunity employment or housing here because you wouldn't want to have one side have more than the other, so that's why we groove that in the middle, I guess, huh? <clears throat> you can see how he's kind of wrestling with it, and if it were a skin or your blade, it would really be difficult, but that fits just about perfect with that wide blade. But you can make two cuts or a cut and a half with a narrower blade, It'd be the same, same thing. I got the last bottom back there you can see to <clears throat> put the screen on and we are have decided to make this a quadruplex so this is going to be four cages high these are this cage is going to be used for grow outs and so we don't need to get in there very often we don't expect much, much in the way of mortality and they'll only be in there for oh two or three weeks probably before we're moving them into the layer cages so that's why we're thinking we can stack it up high we're going to lower this one down a little lower of course we'll make it up a little higher and so we'll see how bad an idea what this was, but the worst can happen is we just don't end up using it. Which would be pretty pretty worst.
We're using a three inch jack screw here. Get on your mark there, George. Oh boy. And that's the middle. We are building four of these cages, so we only have to make four of those. The rest of the pieces we had to make eight of. So what's next? What's next might be assembling these cages, which is kind of the fun part. Alrighty, so we got our parts made. We got our bottoms, our backs, our ends um, made. We do want to do one more thing to the end before we put them together, and that is cut out the uh, place for the feeders. So we got three and a one. George's does not because the waters go there. We got a little spacer here that just kind of centers this thing. And we're clamping that on there like yo. And that'll center that thing up for us. Like that. And then we're just gonna shoot our trusty deck screws into here. We've already got them. on that so that helps help me. And I'm gonna push that up against there nice and tight. And bam. And one This guy, probably should have, should have moved it before I screwed all those in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to do this. Now I pushed it over. Let me get that nice and flush. Yahoo! Well, more than that clamp punch to do. More than that clamp punch to do. There it is. Got it? Yeah. Make sure Screws. Change over to a Phillips bit. We're doing this. Upside down. Sure, can't do that. Flip right. this thing over. And then we're screwing this guy here to the bottom. And again, I'm, we're just showing you technique here. That we use so that you can 
think about a technique to use for yours. So, hold that nice and fresh here. It'll become more apparent as we throw the bottom on there. Like that. And that'll be a beautiful flat. Yeah, we're just resting up against there. Don't got to fight nothing. It's just resting on that little block we just put in there. And this is where that one inch um, thick board is. We made these thin, but we left that thick because this is a structural thing there. Going to screw these. Let's use the right screw. There's the right screw. Like that. Bam. So when we flip this back over, we'll kind of go over how this all becomes kind of self-supporting and structural. It's two by six, you can see how that's really, because this whole thing is suspended over the poop tray, um, we need, and you know, when you're engineering your cages, you really want to be thinking about where does the weight really end up? You know, sometimes it doesn't end up in obvious place. And all the way to these birds, and all the way to the poop, supported by this, and then supported by this and all the weight actually transferred onto this guy. So, engineering it for that. All right, so we'll flip this back over and we'll just kind of look at our cage here. So, um, George is going to lay out where we're going to be cutting out another. There's, see where we left this inch and a half in here. We'll actually be putting a two by four down in there, and it comes up to the same level as this. And that, would, that, as you stack these up, that two by four ends up here. And so that supports the middle of that. And it goes on and on. You'll see that as we stack them up, how it all just kind of stacks on top of one another. But while we're here, um, I want to make a shout out to Winona Ranch. Winona Ranch, um, I don't remember who made contact with who, if Zach made contact with them or they made contact with us. But if you 
watch our Sunday live Q&As. We, every month, we give away a cage and 60 eggs, hatching eggs, to someone that's 18 and under. And um, every month, Winona Ranch, for some blessed reason, gives us a cage to give away with those 60 eggs to someone that wins it in this contest. Um, and building cages isn't for everybody, for sure. And, I, you know, we, we use a lot of special tools and yaka yaka, and it is somewhat complicated. We're really not telling you how, how to do it. We're telling how we do it. So um, this might be the, a good time to say thank you, Winona Ranch. If you do need cages, um, they're the source that we would go to, the source that we've, all, we've paired up with. We're on their website. They're on our website. And, um, and I also want to mention that we do sell quail. So if you're looking at this video or got to this video because you're looking how to build a cage um, at Mike Shire Farm, uh, dot com. You'll find us on the uh, internet, and you'll find us on YouTube. Uh, you'll find us on um, Facebook, and um, but we just wanted to say thank you, Winona Ranch. They don't sponsor us in any way. They didn't, you know, <laughs> been nice they bought this cage, but no. This is our forty-fourth cage that we've built um, for our thing so yeah um anyhow thank you winona ranch and if somebody needs a cage and wants to order uh you can look them up uh our website they'll be on our website or you can just try to find them on the ranch so that's that now it will be continuing to put this thing together and it will start making more sense because you know it's still not together and um but the next thing we'll be building are the poop trays so once we get these four built, we'll build some poop trays and we'll show you how to do that or how we do that. And, um, and then eventually we'll end up down in the barn putting this thing together. See you soon. All right, so now it's time that we make the poop trays. And for the poop trays, we're using metal studs and metal track. Uh, the original idea of that was because we're hanging these from the ceiling and it was a weight issue, and this gave us enough strength and enough surface area, um, but less weight than what it would be if it were a piece of wood. So uh, this time we're not hanging from the ceiling, so it's not really a weight issue, but with the price of wood, it was give or take the same cost anyhow. So we're using a chop saw here. Um, some uh, ear protection is always good when you're doing that. So George's going to cut those to length. Okay. Cut the plates, which are nine foot long, poop trays are nine foot long. plates and uh, I'm going 16 on the center of these oh that's more better I'm just going to mark them on the center <clears throat> and uh, for those who don't know the 16s are marked in red 
kind of tape. Make sure if you got any decent tape at all. One on each end. Okay. That's that. All right, so we're using these um, self-tapping screws. I got a little self-tapping deal there. And we're gonna put the first one out. Like that. Crazy critical. As long as we know we're nice and tight in there. So this is the bottom where we screwed it, now we're going to flip it over and stacks up on top of another. So the end of the egg things actually sets directly on top of this. So it's kind of nice and it's just all stacked up nice and nice and neat. Just drywall screws we're using here. They're self self Are you flush down there, George? No. Good. Now this is 
this zip fly that we talked about. I'm going to put the membrane side down because then as these things stack up, these will actually be the, the lid of the cage above it. So there'll be a cage here and then another one of these guys and up she stacks. And at some point we'll want to square this thing up. So in order to square this up, we're going to say that's uh, 122 and three quarters. A little tricky to do. See, that's only 120 and a half. So let's try uh, 121 and a quarter. 121 and three quarters. So 121 and a half. Should be. Yep. So, on top of this, we'll go the 8th inch ABS plastic. Uh, I remember it being all black stuff, but they do have white ABS. Um, it has a hair cell or a rough surface on one side and a smooth on the other. Of course, you want to use the smooth up. Uh, <clears throat> you'd have to go to a plastic supply house to purchase them. Um, however, there would be alternatives to that from big box, you know, stores. Um, I'm not sure exactly what that would be. This is what we're using. It seems to be holding up good. They've been operational now for a year and three months, four months. Mm -hmm. Three or four months. It seems to be working out all right. Worth it, not worth it, count them, figure it out. Yeah, we can keep counting them. Huh? We got plenty. Okay. All right. That's that. So, so if we would have had the other things ripped and ready, we'd put those in. Since we don't, we won't. All right, we'll get back with you when we cut up some uh, plastic. Howdy folks, we're back at Papa Builder of Things at My Shire Farm. Um, we've taken you through the process of how we're building the big cages. And the only thing left to build now is the doors. This is the same technique that we used on the uh, video uh, starter cages for quail. 
And um, we have that on our playlist on YouTube, My Shire Farm. And uh, we, I have 28 videos that I've did over the couple of years here, uh, building the barn, this and that, composting, different things, uh, tours of the barn and whatnot. But uh, we're gonna go through this real quick. Uh, the cages are assembled now, and uh, we'll go down there today and show you how that all went together. But let's let's just kind of uh, put this door together here real quick, and uh, we'll go over here to the brake. Uh, you wouldn't need a brake, of course. You could bend these by you know individually, but I like to get uh, to get this the right height off of the ground. Um, and I we we have to apologize for pressing on with this cage, but it always comes down to either me doing a video or getting something done. So it went down to getting something done. So I like to, uh oh, we got trouble here, but we ain't gonna fix that anytime soon. So we'll, we'll bend the rest of that. But that gave me a start. That's all I was really looking for as a start. <clears throat> We're working on our beehives here this morning. Uh, getting a bunch of frames, re-foundation put in them. We did have some bees that survived the winter, which is good. So this gives me a start. And of course, this is the right length to fit inside the cage. It just happens to be exactly 48. And the material that I bought, and I'll go over again, most of, most of the material, of course, this is brand new, but most of the aluminum that you see me working with are is bought as scrap. Uh, it, it was cut off from somebody, you know, else that wanted to buy something that was a certain size, and these are what they call drops. So it's a fraction of the price of new stuff. And I bought a lot of this really pretty aluminum here <clears throat> for a pretty inexpensive price. So I'm just tucking this under here like that, trying to hold that up tight against it and tucking these under there like that. And then I'll reach around and grab them here, I hope. <clears throat> we had a lot of these to build and I was on a roll, but it's been a day or two since I've done it. Well, I don't know when I finished them up, Wednesday, I think. It's Sunday already, the weeks fly by here. So this is, my version of a hinge is what that does. So when you're just drilling a hole inside your cage, that gives you the hinge to open and close the door. Now the ones that go up high, we like the hinge down so that you can reach in over. And the ones that are down low, we like the hinge at the bottom so they simply drop down out of your way. And if you did, you know, put them the other way, that would be awkward, you know, you'd be, flipping them up and they would be in your way and come. So I hope that's self-explanatory. But we're just gonna tuck all these down in here. And that is how we make a door. Now, after that's done, we'll, we'll put a little bend in here and that'll stiffen this thing up. So we're gonna come back over here and we're gonna put a little bend in there and that will finish up a door. If you've seen any of my videos, you'll see that I use this brake a lot. And uh, they're hard to come by. This one wasn't terribly expensive. I think I gave $800 for it 100 years ago. And there's that board in a way stopping me from bending it. That would give us that strength that we need at the bottom. And that's how we make a door for these cages. There's other ways to make doors, you know, wood frames and yaka yaka, but we found this to be the easiest, uh, cheapest. Uh, when you go making, I think we figured out this is our 68 cage. Each one of those cages would have two doors. And so if you're paying, what it, you know, five bucks for a hinge, that would add up pretty quick. And uh, so we try to, and, and hinges are expensive. And these aren't, you know, inexpensive as far as the time goes. Uh, we'll go down and take a look at the 
finished product. Um, today is Sunday, and so we'll be on our live video tonight, and that is the last uh, last Sunday of February, 2021. So uh, we'll head down to the bar and we'll show you the cage and that'll be it for a big cage. Now this is the big cage that we made. I do have a video on a smaller cage. It'll, it'll hold um, 20 birds or so. We call it our starter cage. That'll be on our playlist again and on YouTube. And it's called starter cages for quail. And uh, a lot of the same principles went into that cage as what we did with the bigger one. But uh, first, if you need a starter cage, that's what you want to do. Uh, you'll be able to apply the, ramp, the sloped uh, egg cage. The one that we, the starter cage does not have the ramp. So uh, a, ramp, a sloped bottom. So we'll see you in a little bit down in the bar. Thanks. All right, so this is our uh, feeder that we use. It's the same feeder we had even on the conveyor cages. Uh, we do have a video on how to do this. It's, uh, it's again on the playlist on my shower farm on YouTube. And uh, you, you can visit that to see how we bent this up and whatever. But we do, again, we make this out of our scrap material that we buy at our local supply house. So we'll squeeze that into the video somehow. There you go. All right, good morning. We're down here at the bar, and I'll show you the first cage. My dog Rex, he's a good boy. He just said the cows. So, this is it stacked up. As you notice, we did do four tiers high, which makes the lower one uh, pretty inconvenient. It, it is a grow out cage, so we won't be getting in there very much except to uh, put them in and take them out once. So, um, the important thing when you're building these cages and big cages especially is to keep the weight where it needs to be. So this is a 2 by 6 base that it sets on and uh, that will support the bottom of the thing here because the bottom goes all the way down just like the bottom of this goes all the way down. Oh, you can't see that. It's up here. Let's see how can we see that. Here we go. Let me see it here. So, <clears throat> this 2x6 that we, put, that we put in there when we built this bottom is now the backbone of this whole cage. And then the fact that it has this other thing kind of makes a little truss. And then I was just assuming, uh, based on the math that I know, that this 2x4 will support that load up to 4 foot, and this is just a little bit over 4 foot. So you can actually use a 2x4 for a floor joist if you don't go over 4 foot. So uh, that's what holds that. Then the weight comes down, all this weight gets down to here, and then this weight just goes on to here, and then on to here, and on to here, and on to here, and on to here, and on to here. You just got to be aware of where all this weight ends up and how far it's got to stand. So that's the reason we use two by sixes and the things that we do when they do. <clears throat> These uh, two by sixes here, it might have seemed like an overkill, end up being where the uh, cage is hooked onto <clears throat> and the cages get drilled into, or the, or the doors, I should say. And then the only thing we really didn't show you this time, and I don't know if we did ever, is that I bend up these little pieces of aluminum and I scrap aluminum. These little levers are made out of uh, PVC foam board. I got that at uh, Home Depot. Uh, probably, maybe, maybe it's three quarters. I got the three quarters as well. And then um, <clears throat> this is all set up like that. So again, we have these going down and <clears throat> this going down and this one will go up. So this one goes up like this to be a little more clean. Well, Zach's idea to put the screen on top of this, I hope they don't hang themselves, um, but to let the light through, and it really lightens up this, this top cage big time uh, as far as letting the light through, and that's a really good idea. So, um, you know, 
I wish you could have seen us put this together, but as it just comes down to making a video or getting something done, and we opted to get it done, obviously. So, uh, we'll edit this puppy, get it out as soon as we can, and um, I hope it shows a little bit on how to catch a fish, because that's what I'm trying to show you. I'm not trying to give you a fish, I'm trying to show you how to catch them. So, uh, if you have any questions, I'll be around, you know, you can contact Jack, but I'll have to ask any questions. Other than what size every board is, I'm not going to do that. Um, so, that's us at uh, Rock Shadow Farm, and uh, we'll get the city out soon. Thanks, Bob.